Okay, so again, my objective here is to get you to think the way Illustrator thinks based on what you select and based on the tool that you're using. So to break down the tools very, very generically, I have selection tools here, I have creation tools, and I have transformation tools. Now those are the generic three categories. We'll talk about these other categories in a subsequent video. So I can select the object, I can create the object, or I can transform the object. Because anything about an object is under the object menu itself. Right now, I have nothing selected. So if I went to the object menu, you would see basically nothing here. Because I have nothing selected. In order to affect something, all computer software works exactly the same way. In order to affect something, I need to select something. So I'm going to hold down the command key and click to select it. Now, I was talking earlier in a previous video on how I can transform the object. So as an example, under the object menu, anything about transformation is under the transformation menu. Transform, move, rotate, rotate, reflect, scale, shear. Shear is the same as skewing something. So if I was to angulate or skew backwards or to the left or to the right, it's underneath the transformation. Now, what's not here is cloning, but cloning is part of transformation. So anything you do to the object, you can repeat again by hitting Command D. So as an example, with the object selected, we're going to scale the object using a transformation tool called Scale. Now, these are very simple tools to use. I have the Scale tool. I have the Reflect tool. I have the Rotation tool, R for Rotation. Okay, so inside these tools are subtools. So I can scale, shear. Now the shear unfortunately doesn't have a shortcut, but scale is the letter S. Rotate is the letter R. Reflecting is the letter O. So O for reflecting. But it's not the letter F because F is a different tool. Okay, so what I want to share with you is with the object selected, I'm going to hit the scale tool and simply hit the return key. By hitting the return key, we'll bring up the scale dialog box. Okay, now this is a very important step. So I'm about to transform the object very generically. More specifically, I'm going to scale the object. More specifically, the selected object. Because if I don't have anything selected, then it can't be affected. In order to affect the object, we need to select the object. So we're going to scale this down at say 55%. And we're going to the return key. So it just scaled it down at 55%. Now, if I want to do another 55%, I could simply object, transform, transform again, which is command D, duplicate, command D, Macintosh, control D for Windows. I could transform the object. So command D, command D, command D. So it's going to go 55, 55, 55, 55. Of course, I can undo that by hitting command Z a few gazillion times. Okay. So I have rotated the object. Okay. Now I want to share with you, there's four transformation tools, which are the rotate tool, the shear tool, the reflect tool, and the, um, I'm sorry, the scale tool. So the letters is R for rotation, O for reflecting, S for scale, and shear, unfortunately, doesn't have a shortcut. So if you're going to be shearing things a lot, what I suggest you can do is if I click right here, I can pull out this palette, and I can put my tools right here. So here is my shear icon. So here's what shear does. I'm going to pick a point to shear from and shear backwards. Okay. So basically, it's a form of skewing, if it skews it, it shears it, it planes it backwards. Now, if you want to constrain that, you pick a point to shear from, holding on the shift key and shearing back. Okay, so again, I just want to overemphasize, there's four transformation tools. So if you write that down as a note, there's four transformation tools, yet there's three ways that I can transform an object. We already discovered one way, so as for scale, Hit the return key, so we can scale this down at 60%. That's one way. By default, when you use a dialog box, it's going to transform from the center. So I want to think very generically here. Transform from the center. So again, what does that mean? Well, what type of transformation? Scale, rotate, reflect, shear. It's going to do it from the object center point 
by default when you hit the return key. Now let's say I don't want to do it from the center. Maybe I want to scale from this point right here. Okay, so how would I do that? Well, that's the second way that I could transform an object. So in the scale tool, I have the object selected. I'm going to pick a point to scale from. Click, and I'm going to drag and move the object. And if I hold down the shift key, it's going to make it proportional because I'm holding down the shift key. So that's one way I can scale the object from a certain transformation point. I can do the same thing with my rotation tool. So as an example, if I go to R for rotation and hit the return key, it's going to bring up the rotation dialog box. And where is it going to rotate from? You guessed it. It's going to rotate from the mathematical center. Here is where it's going to rotate from. Not here, here. So if I want to rotate this at 45 degrees, I could type in 45 and hit the return key. So it's going to rotate at 45 degrees. I can duplicate that same transformation by simply hitting Command D. Command D, Command D, Command D, Command D, Command D. So those are two ways that I can transform the object. But I said there are three ways to do this. So again, the first way is hit the return key. That's going to do it from the center. The second way is to pick a transformation point. So I'm just going to pick this as my transformation point. And since I'm in the rotation tool, it's going to rotate the object from that point. How cool is that? Now let's say I want to get the best of both worlds. Okay? So let's say I want to... I want to scale from a certain point, but I also want to scale in the exact production, exact proportion. So how can I do that? Well, let's go to the scale tool and I want to pick my transformation point. So again, I want to scale from this point here, plus I want to get a dialog box. I want the best of both worlds. I want to pick a transformation point, plus get a dialog box. So how can I do this? Well, the option key, option for choices, choices for options. Windows, Alt key, the alternative choices, options for Macintosh. Option key click brings up a dialog box. In fact, before I do this, if you hold down the, the option key, you'll see that you have a little dot, dot, dot at the end of it. Dot, dot, dot basically means more information, which means you're going to get a dialog box. So now I can scale from this point at, say, 60%. Before we scale from the center, so now I can scale exactly at 60% and hit the return key. And if I command D, object transform, command D is going to repeat the transformation. It's pretty, pretty cool. Okay, now let's do something a little bit more exciting. So I'm going to delete this. I'm going to bring back my rulers, command key, semicolon, command semicolon, control semicolon for Windows. So we want to create an oval. In our first video, I shared with you create an oval by holding down the L key. And I want to create an oval from the center. But in this particular case, not a perfect oval, so I'm just going to drag from the center, Option key, and basically make an oval just like that. Now, I don't want the oval to have a stroke. So I'm going to hit the Command, the X key, make sure stroke is selected over here to the left. The stroke is selected, I'm going to hit the forward slash key. The forward slash key is the question mark key. Forward slash, now it has no stroke. Now I'm going to hold down the command key and move this up a little bit. Right about there. And I'm holding down the shift key to keep it in line. So I don't give it a stroke by hitting the forward slash key, the, the question mark key. Now here's my objective, and this is a very simple objective. I want to create a flower pattern. I want to rotate this object. Each object is going to be a separate petal to the flower. So let's understand how we can do this. If I go with the object selected, which it is, I hold down the command key, select the object in this fill, just select any place inside the fill. You don't have to do this. You can just click any place inside of its fill. It's now selected. In order to affect the object, you need to select the object. I'm now going to go to the R for rotation. R for rotation. I'm going to pick a point to rotate from. Click, and I'm going to take the top of this and move it. As I move it, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to hold down the Option key to make a clone copy, and hold down the Shift key to constrain it. So it's going to constrain it to a 45 or 90 degree angle, whatever I'm closest to. Make sure you let go of your mouse hand first. Hold down the Option key and the Shift key. Windows Alt key and the Shift key. Make sure you let go of your mouse hand first. So what have I done? I have generically transformed the object. Anything about the object is under the object menu. 
So from the object menu, anything that falls under this category, which is rotation plus cloning, which is not part of the menu, but it's still part of the transformation. So I cloned it plus I rotated this so I can repeat the transformation by simply hitting Command D. Command D, Command D, all the way around to get a perfect flower petal. How cool is that? I have people I teach this to that spend four years over at SVA or Parsons or Pratt here in New York City, and they were never taught this. $100,000 later, and they were copying and pasting. That's not how you do it. You clone copy. I'm going to undo this for a second. Now, let's make this a little bit more challenging. I'm going to just arrow key up this for a second. So let's say I want to rotate from this point here, plus I want to rotate, and I want to have, uh, let's have 13 of these. I want to have 13 petals equally spaced around a circle. So this is a very simple thing to do if you know how to do it. So we're going to have the object selected, holding down the Option key, picking this as my transformation point. So again, I have the object selected. I'm in the rotation tool. I'm holding on the Option key Macintosh, Control key for Windows, and I'm going to get a dialog box. So I want to have 13 of these. So how many degrees do I need to rotate this? Well, very simple question here, but a very simple answer. Illustrator will do the math for you if you know one simple rule that there's 360 degrees inside of a circle, which is true. Now, if you don't know that, you slept through third grade math class. So there's 360 degrees in a circle divided by 13. So that's how many degrees I'm going to rotate. But I'm just not going to hit the OK button. I'm going to hit the Copy button, which is going to make a clone copy. So there is two. And I can simply repeat the transformation by hitting Command D. Command D all the way around. So there is 13 physical petals, which would have driven you crazy if you didn't know how to do this. So my dear friends that come from Pratt, Parsons, the New School, who spent $100,000 over the past four years learning this program, they were never taught this. So here we are in our third video, simple, simple video, and I'm sharing with you how the program thinks. Okay, so that's the basic bread and butter of how Illustrator thinks. Illustrator is all about transformation. Now, of course, there's a lot more to the program, but these simple little three videos that I just posted on YouTube for you will help to make a better user of you. Now, what I highly suggest you do do is go inside of the uh, description of this video that you're watching, and there's a coupon link. You can go to udemy.com and get my $150 A to Z Illustrator course for $39, which is a great investment in your skill. You'll get full access, 24-hour access to all my Illustrator videos for life, which includes free upgrades for $39. It's a great deal, guys. So look at the bottom of this video. And you can see that there's a coupon link down there for $39. Take advantage of that. I will talk to you soon. Carpe diem. My name is Robert Farrell, Adobe Illustrator Master Guru. Yes. Am I proud of it? Yes. Am I cocky? Yes. Talk to you soon. Carpe diem.